Well, this little barn door here, that's maybe about four feet by three, maybe five by three. I'm going to see if I can get it in one piece with the original hinges, because that would make a great coffee table. Hey everyone, it's Sharon here and today I'm going to show you step by step how I turned an old chicken coop door into a functional one of a kind coffee table. Um, but first, does anybody remember this scene? Wow. The door came from an old coop that was on Curtis's eight acre um, picker paradise and for those of you who have watched this series, uh, you'll appreciate what it was like just to get back to the chicken coop. Uh, it had pretty much been abandoned for at least six to eight years. And so things were a little bit run down, but it was definitely worth it. Once I got through there, I found it. I am just going to take it with the board that the um, hinges are attached to. And all I did was I took the crowbar up there and loosened a little bit and... Uh, yeah, the whole thing came off, so that's all one piece. There's a table for you, Curtis. So this is the um, door off of the old chicken coop on Curtis's property. And I told him I would take it and make a coffee table out of it. So I left this board on. This is where it was attached to the chicken coop with the hinges. And what I was thinking was letting it drop down and having the hinges attached. But it's a little too much termite eaten down here for the hinge to even stay on. Plus, when I flipped it over, it's a pretty, pretty termited. So it wouldn't be stable anyway. Now this is a pine tongue and groove. It's not oak. So it's got a lot of splinters. I'm going to sand it. I know he probably um, wanted to keep it that grayish color. I mean, I'll, I'll sand it down, see if he wants it stained a different color. Otherwise, we'll leave it uh, the pine look that it's going to come out. And as far as the hinges, I'll do like uh, what I did with my other table. Just do some steel wool on them, put a little varnish, get them back to their rich color. Well, that was just one sweep with a 60 grit just to get some of the big stuff off. Boy, I really like it. I mean, it's still very uh, rough and has a lot of splinters, but it got rid of uh, some of the big stuff. And you can still see a little bit of that gray wherever it's going to be real deep. Now, you may say, well, why don't you run, take them off and run them through the planer? Well, if I take them off, First of all, I have to take all those nails out that are all bent over, and then it's not going to be original. And secondly, there's nails in there that I'm not even going to be able to see until I get in there with the planer, then it's too late. So, I'm leaving them on. But I am liking it already, Curtis. Not that I need another one, but maybe it'll never find its way to you. Well, that's it with uh, 220. I went all the way down to 220. I do have a 320 that I think I might just use by hand. Um, but it is it's very smooth now. You don't have to worry about getting your blisters or, I mean, splinters. The only thing on uh, this end here, which was the bottom, and which was kind of eaten up by termites, 
I was trying to keep that original end because it goes right up to that hinge there, but I'm this is just a little too too frayed. I mean, I tried sanding some of the edges to smooth them out and I I think it'll just be I don't know, won't look good. So there it's already cut up there. So I'll probably follow that cut down to the end here, which will take me right to that board that's underneath. It will be a little bit shorter on this end than up there, but I think it'll look a little bit better and be a little bit safer. So not bad for old pine. Usually I'm working with oak, but it's nice to work with something different once in a while. So one of the first things I did was just trim the rough edges. You can see it was all rotted and uh, chewed up a little bit from all the critters. So I got that cleaned up and then I also just took off that really small piece that was on the edge because it was loose anyway. I took a sander and started to clean up a little bit on the ends there and also with the steel wool on the hinges. So Mr. Capper will have instructions to uh, salvage that big post in the back. That's gorgeous. And then these, uh, I, don't know, I guess they're 4 by 4s Definitely want to try and salvage them. So on the underside, I needed to build up a couple of the corners where the legs were going to be. So I just added some more pieces that I had trimmed off and made it all level. I also ended up adding a bunch of screws from behind just to um, help support it because it was a little bit loose. I needed to get a hole drilled through these, uh, I think they were 3 8 inch thick hardened steel plates that I was going to use. So he used his new uh, magnetic evolution drill, and you can see it worked pretty slick. So I just found the center of each of the uh, legs and had the plates, and those were half inch leg screws. Drilled a hole, put the leg screw in there, and attached to each of the legs. I then marked the uh, where it was going to go. I just put some paint on the bottom of that leg screw and then just drilled a hole so I could countersink the head of that leg screw so it would lay flat. Made sure it was level and even on all of the outside edges and just attached the plates to the underside with some more shorter leg screws. So I also wanted to use a, a kind of an apron on the bottom. So I had some old wood from another barn, used my Craig um, jig, and then uh, just put those corners in along with some glue. I did add uh, just some corner braces to help keep it uh, square and then a brace in the middle for some more support. So I didn't think I was really ever going to use these pine boards that I picked, but you never know. <laughs> so I actually did use those. Um, they just need a little trimming 
and a little cleaning and sanding and I ended up using those for underneath and I think I used about three different boards and trimmed them uh, so that they fit. So once I knew they were going to fit I just glued them and then I also um, used the brad nailer just to get them a little bit more secure. I attached that extra piece underneath it was missing you know that one little corner and I wanted to make sure it had a nice um, even surface underneath and that's what the boards look like once they were all tacked on. Now I did also then seal it with the same type of lacquer put about four five coats on that. That was the first coat and it really soaked it up so had a few additional coats. Well, see, Curtis, remember when you and Joe were uh, hauling that wood back for me that I picked and pulled? And gosh, you guys, you know, you almost hurt your backs and workman's comp okay, and all Okay, we that both stuff. hurt our backs already after three pieces. Oh, <laughs> workman's comp, Mrs. K. Well, wait a minute. Is that on our business or yours, workman's comp? Oh, shit. <laughs> You're good now. You own the property. <laughs> Wait, my back's starting to hurt now, Curtis. All right, maybe now it's worth it. Let's see if I can get some coasters. Cut some of them off for on the coffee table. Well, look at them. They didn't turn out bad. Um, you know, they got half of the, all the outer part of the uh, wood, you know, has all the wormholes in it. Wait, I knew there was potential. Mm -hmm.